A condemned young 13-year-old was beaten, rejected, and ultimately banished from Islamic school by his Quranic teachers. The Imam issued a decree that he was not to be spoken to, even by his own family. Abdul's only sin was that he was asking too many questions in his search to know more about God. Lost and alone, he contemplated suicide as he walked a South Asian road. Despite thoughts of ending his life, that day's journey marked an exciting new beginning. It was a hot May day. I was coming home about noontime. The temperature was about 100 degrees and we had 84% humidity. I looked ahead and I saw a young man going to what I assumed was to the bus station through which I would be passing going to our home. So I told my rickshaw puller, let's stop and pick up that young man ahead of us. When I was on the rickshaw and I was talking with him, and he, he, he talked with me so nicely, and he was so, you know, he was so good. And I had a feeling, how? Oh, I, I, I'm a condemned man. Nobody wants to talk with me. And this man, he, why he's so good to me? I was really doubt about him. He, is he a man or angel? So when I was sitting on the rickshaw, and now and then I was touching his hand to be sure he's a man. By day's end, Tom and Abdul had struck up a friendship. At a later encounter, Tom gave Abdul a Bible. Several nights of intense study of God's Word led to Abdul crying out to God for salvation through Jesus Christ. After Abdul became a Christian, he told his family about this. And of course, like all the neighbors, his father and brothers were very upset. He was put out of his home. His father joined in with the community and beat him, and this caused Abdul to leave home. After many years away from home, Abdul heard God calling him back to the village of his youth. Once home, he encountered a childhood friend. His banishment from home still firmly in place, Abdul went to stay with this friend. And I had my Quran and my Bible with me, and every night I share with him, every night. Within three months he has a big sense, and he is ready to receive Christ, I mean, to take baptism. And then his parents understood that. They was very upset with me. In afternoon, they forced me and they took me to their, to their field, you know, when they're, they're, they're playing the soccer ball, they took me there and they tied my hand aside. And they were asking me question about Jesus. And somebody started to kick me with their boot. And uh, somebody just boxing me. And everyone, they spit on me. They spit on my head, my face, my, my, my whole body was covered by spit. When Jesus was crucified there and said, Father, forgive them that do not know what they are doing. I had the same vision because they do not know what they are doing. And I was praying for them. I said, please God, help them to understand. Please God, save them and forgive them. That was my prayer. Left for dead, Abdul's friend, his new convert, came to his aid and released him from his bonds. He then begged Abdul, despite the torture he had just witnessed, to be baptized. Next morning, it's about nine o'clock, it's like an open place. I took him there and I baptized him. And after his baptism, I says, God, thanks, thanks God, Thank you. Yesterday afternoon, I was beaten up in this village and I was only one. I was only one Christian in this village. But today, we are two. Tomorrow, we can be 200. Day after tomorrow, we can be 2,000, God, if you, if you want to. Yes. I think God listened. He had listened my prayer that day. In that village, 
we have 1600 believers and all of them they spit on me and all of them is believer today through Abdul and through the movement the people that he's led to the Lord I understand there are 280,000 converts who have been baptized there are I think over 3,000 places where the gospel is being preached on a regular basis the Bible is being read and one day God's going to sweep across that land with the message of his love and all the peoples will rise up to praise the name of our God and it all started with that rickshaw ride back a long time before that. And I was reminded of that phrase in the hymn, by deeds of loving kindness, the heavenly kingdom comes. Simple gestures led to miraculous results. Two country boys, one from Mississippi, one from South Asia, met on an earthly path and embarked on a heavenly journey.